I've been on quite a few podcasts lately, and here's a conversation that came up recently on the Makers of Fashion podcast. Do you think the industry is kind of skewed towards couture or like the perception of it? So everyone sees this as like, oh, it's a pinnacle, I'm going to work for one of the big fashion houses, when the reality is um, completely different. Well, and, and that depends on what you're talking about, because couture and like, Couture can be luxury, but luxury isn't necessarily couture. And it got me thinking, how many of you truly understand the difference between couture, luxury, and ready to wear? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mikkel Drew Pelham. I talk about digital fashion design software and communication on this channel. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. Within this channel, I also talk a lot about fashion entrepreneurship, starting a clothing brand and how you can have a profitable business and not an expensive hobby. But one of the first things you need to understand before you start your business is who is your customer and what category will your product fall under? And the reason you need to know this is because the answer to those questions will affect how you market your product, where you market your product, where your product can be or should be sold, who you market to, what types of materials you choose to make the product, the price point, and so many other decisions you'll make during your design development process. So how about we first talk about couture fashion? As I mentioned in that snippet from the podcast, one is not necessarily synonymous with the other. Couture clothing is definitely luxury, but all luxury products, especially anything that most of us regular folks can access, are definitely not couture. And let's also clear up the distinction between haute couture and couture. Haute couture is a specific type of couture that can only be created and operated in France and it represents the highest level of creativity, exclusivity, and craftsmanship in fashion. The term haute couture is legally protected and specifically refers to French fashion houses that adhere to the rules of the French government and the Chambre Syndicale de la Haute Couture. You also have to be invited as a guest member each season, and in order for you to receive membership into the Haute Couture Club, you have to be invited four times in a row. The other requirements are that you need to present a 25 to 50 piece collection twice a year during Paris Couture Week. Each piece must require more than one fitting and you must maintain an atelier in Paris with at least 15 full-time employees and 20 full-time technical workers. That would be your beaters, embroiderers, etc. But yes, haute couture is a whole thing. So any of you thinking about starting a business tomorrow, know that if you want to call yourself haute couture, unless you can meet all of the previous criteria I mentioned, which even if you meet employment requirements and you're in France, you still have to be invited into the club. You cannot call yourself an haute couture house. Now you can possibly call yourself couture and couture is handmade, one of a kind, made to measure garments. There's also a level of exclusivity, artistry and craftsmanship here, but you aren't beholden to the rules of the French government. In contrast, ready to wear is just that products you can go into a store, whether that's brick and mortar or online, and buy right off the shelf because it's ready for you to wear. And note that ready to wear doesn't automatically denote that it's low quality or cheap because you could buy designer ready to wear and it still be very high quality. But what it does denote is that it's usually standard sizing, whatever that standard is for the brand, Often all, or at least a good portion of the product is made by machines. There are multiples of that same item as opposed to one of a kind, and it's strategically placed and priced for consumption by a larger audience and to make money. How large of an audience is brand relevant? Because if you think about the levels of fashion, 
Clothing made and sold on the mass market level will make much more money just by the sheer volume of what's sold and how accessible it is than clothing made and sold on the bridge or designer levels. One of the biggest things to consider on a fashion business level when choosing whether you want your business to be couture or a ready-to-wear brand is volume and profit. For a lot of us, the idea of building a business where we can be as creative as we want to be and build these works of art that someone can wear is extremely attractive and exciting. The issue with that is there is a much smaller group of people who can buy these clothes and if and when they do, it's probably seasonal, think red carpet or maybe even wedding. And for many with a couture only business model, it's just not very profitable. Hmm. Valid question. And this is actually something that was addressed recently in the business of fashion. Haute Couture and Couture isn't really designed to be worn. It serves as a sort of innovation lab for designers to experiment with different shapes, cuts, and styles that can be incorporated more modestly into their ready-to-wear collections. Designers can flex their creative muscles to inspire their next line or the entire fashion house. It's also marketing in its highest form, creating the brand identity, creating the dream, seducing consumers into buying more perfume and accessories. So you might ask, if couture isn't designed to be worn, it's about innovation and doesn't really make much money, then how do these businesses stay afloat? And if I want that for my business, how can I be profitable? This friend is when we start talking about luxury. While there are multiple definitions of luxury these days, because in more recent years, there's been a push to make luxury more accessible, the idea of luxury fashion has always been that it's high-end products made with superior quality materials crafted with attention to detail. Luxury fashion evokes a feeling of prestige and exception, and it's often tied to a very upscale lifestyle. Many luxury brands not only sell their products, but they're selling the luxury experience. Now, you can have a couture brand that sells luxury products that are more accessible to a wider audience. And in fact, this is the business model of most haute couture and couture brands. This is what I previously referred to, and it's basically how many couture companies keep the lights on. If you notice, brands like Chanel, Dior, YSL, Armani, all have other items like perfume, accessories, even footwear that they sell to a larger audience. And while a Dior handbag might retail for $5,000 or more, a Dior haute couture gown might sell for twice that amount, and that's a modest number. Plus, that gown might take months to be made just for that one gown, when you could make 50 handbags and sell them to multiple people in a shorter amount of time. Which one do you think is making the most profit for the company? So here's the bottom line. If you've decided that you want to create fashion for fun, not for profit, couture can be a great way to go. It allows you to be as creative and expressive as you want, adding attention to detail and craftsmanship and exclusivity to your heart's desire. But remember, once you say you want a business, your intention is to make a profit and you can still do what you love but you need to make a profit while you're doing it. Otherwise, you don't have a business. You have an expensive hobby. Here's the last thing I will say and suggest. For those of you who are saying, okay, I can create this luxury couture company using the previously mentioned business model, you can, it's possible. But I would urge you to create the thing that keeps the lights on first. Couture is a very expensive business to be in. Not only are the materials expensive, but the talent to create these pieces are expensive. They're also very time consuming. And if you're spending all of your time on this one piece, it means you're probably not working on anything else. And you may be putting all of your time into this one thing. So you're going to want a source of income that's steady, repeatable, and a no-brainer. So work on that first. 
Get that working like a well-oiled machine so you can easily generate income while you're working on these other couture pieces that, while really fun and creative and maybe a great source of marketing for your brand, will no doubt consume a lot of your time and energy. Thanks for watching today's video. If you're starting a fashion business, be sure you check out my playlist, How to Start a Clothing Brand. There are lots of great videos in that playlist, including what questions you should be asking yourself before you even start. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video if you find it helpful. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you next time.